ties suck. According to the Neckwear Association of America, in the 1800s, to touch another man's tie was taboo and a catalyst for a duel. Why should I trust any of those fast-talking, phony, sporting, colorful, new silk ties every day on TV? Totally non-functional but costly suits are just the unis CEOs wear to try and demand our respect. They spend so much time wearing makeup, you'd think they were bubble-headed office beauty queens. Reading statements in those lame-ass, shiny leather shoes with hidden elevators should impress us. Their practice parroting of speeches written for them by their donors, writers, can't move me anymore. Reading bold plans, reciting fiery rhetoric, and twisted press releases doesn't make a man of action. In my low-life world, everybody is not all and only about some pathological need for public attention. Basing daily strategy on overnight polling and focus groups is not a part of my meaning of leadership. The thought of letting paid marketeers mold my media personality to get votes makes me nauseous. Then, even if you get elected just to be seated, you must wear a monkey suit in their holy chamber. Sometimes they even loosen those ties, half rolled up their sleeves for staged photo ops with real workers. And the mind-numbing sow bites they are cloaked with are cynically passed off as a reasoned debate. Carefully cultivated images serve merely to secure more donations for more ads to buy more boats. Those starch shirts must always be perfectly crisp and clean or it throws them off their sales pitch. Their swishy staff members spend hours on the colors for the occasion. Now that's leading by example. Still, those guys are so insecure they just can't keep from groping every bimbo that comes within their reach, dressed for success, yet quite unable to perform even the simplest real task beyond holding a water glass. Yeah, power ties for power brokers, movers and shakers, anonymous yet furtively savage rodents, backstabbers with laser pointers, shoulder climbers in shiny black wingtips, ass kissers with $20,000 teeth, going really casual in a dress suit and suit coat without a tie for up to an hour at a time. Fearless. The security of real silk on his neck must surely keep a genuine leader focused on his donor's agenda. Dumb me down some more until I see their clown costumes as solemnly as say, that gay papal regalia. Hey, that empty shit can't intimidate anymore, but it does identify like an orange prison jumpsuit. What other activities is a pricey three-piece suit except for canned speeches and big meetings? Oh, and their carefully planned odors so meticulously applied after the real smells are cauterized. Yep, ties suck, and anyone wearing one on a daily basis surely suffers from permanent brain damage. All oh, you starched and programmed little roosters, at least dress like you could actually do something. There'll be no more aura of respect generated by your costly finery. But here's a caustic rejection. You, you ever try and drive a UPS truck or tear off a roof with a coat and tie on? No? I didn't think so. You can't walk on a shop floor with those slippery leather soles, so get out until you get some sense. Your very reason and imagination are constrained by the artificial stiffness of your stupid formal garb. And you do that willingly? Oh, I forgot. Your handlers set out your clothes every day, just like your mommy did. Hey, you ought to try going to the unemployment office dressed in your strutting peacock TV get-ups. Yeah, they taught you about ginning undeserved respect by dressing funny back there in law school, right? Look, your personas are as fraudulent as your fairy tale voter spin or your air-popped corporate videos. 
the frilly finery you must always wear now simply helps to publicly identify you like a star of David in the days of old.